Today I'm going to talk about the Big Tree Tech Octopus version 1.0. This is going to be a basic tutorial to show you the functionality of the board and also how to load firmware. In future tutorials, I'll cover the functionality in greater detail for each one of these things, but I'm just going to go over a rough outline of the board. So to start with, we have our steppers. We have our X stepper, our Y stepper, our Z stepper, our E0 stepper, our E1, 2, 3, and 4. So that'll give you a functionality of five extruders if you so choose. Now, the steppers that you can use for this are anything that's related to TMC. So you can do a TMC 2130, a TMC 5160, or you could do a TMC 2208 or various other types with UART. Now the processor over here is a 32-bit processor. So it's an ARM Cortex-M4 that functions at 180 megahertz. Over here we have our display for our legacy displays. So you can use something like a RepRap smart full graphics controller or variations of that that connect to these pin connections. They also have the TFT connection up here so you can use a touch screen display. Over here they have the connection for your BL touch or 3D touch. And then over here we have a Wi-Fi module that you can actually plug in if you so choose. We also have our SD reader right here as well as our connection for our computer if we so choose or a Raspberry Pi. This will also work with Clipper and Marlin. And then we have, let's see, a bunch of other functionality that I need to go around the board to figure out. First of all, we have our USB connection. Then we have an RJ11 connection. And the RJ11 connection, I guess, is for future functionality that'll plug into that. Then if we look around the board, there's a lot more functionality having to do with end stops and detect pins. So over here, we have a bunch of end stops that are covered being like your X minimum, your Y minimum, or your Z minimum, and then also run out detectors that you can use. There's uh, some functionality over here that I haven't figured out yet. And that appears to be some kind of DC sensor, but I'll have to research that. Then over here we have several fans that you can adjust the power with the jumpers. So at the moment, I believe it can do either 12 or 20, excuse me, it can do 12 or 5 volts. I'm not sure about the 24 volts as of yet. Then there's various pins that I'm going to have to sort out. There's probably the SWD pins here, but the labeling is not perfect. We also have a power detect set of pins over here. And then we have our thermistor pins so that we can tell temperature between either our extruders or our heat bed for the power over here. Then we have our extruder ports right here. So there's four of them and they can be used for both your heat bed and also for your extruders. So now that I've covered most of that, I'll let you know that there's fuses over here so that you can protect your power supply and your board. There's also other functionality that's built into the board. There's probably some CAN pins over here, and I believe there might be some I2C pins hidden around here as well. But at the moment, I'll cover that in future tutorials. So remember to like and subscribe. But for now, what I'm going to do is show you how to actually load the firmware on the board. Now, normally, what you're going to need to use is an SD card. Now, if you want, I can re recommend a link that I'll drop into the description. But for now, I'm just using an 8 gigabit drive for the SD or micro SD. So I'm going to use this Rocket Tech in order to load the firmware. So there's going to be some preparation that's involved. So I'm just going to plug that in right here and then plug it into my computer. Once it's plugged into the computer, 
what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the browser for a second so I can show you around the board. Now here is the octopus that you can find in hardware. So I'll take you back here for a second and show you where to find it. If you go to the Big Tree Tech webpage on GitHub, which I'll leave in the description, you're going to go to repository and then you're going to type Octo, if I can spell it correctly, and you'll see the Big Tree Tech Octopus version 1.0. Inside here, there's various things such as the Octopus Manual. So there's also hardware where I picked out the pins so I can see what's on the boards. Now you can see that there's like numbering on each one of these pins that tells us what the functionality is. This should be in the actual pinouts, which I'll show you in a moment in Marlin. So let me bring that up so you can see what I'm talking about. So inside Marlin, what we need to do first is load it with our VS code with platform IO loaded. So what I'm going to do is put a link in the upper right hand corner so you can figure out how to install it and install the actual extensions over here. But for now, I'm just going to walk you through how to load the firmware. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to go to the Explorer. I'm going to open the folder. I'm going to go to my downloads folder where I've downloaded Marlin from Marlin's firmware website. And I've already extracted this. So you're going to have to go into the Marlin folder, then the next Marlin folder, then select folder. Inside here, it's going to come up with the default environment. And in this case, the default environment is the Mega 2560. So we're going to have to make some changes and explore a little bit around to find the information we're looking for. So to start with, I'm going to go to the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside here, I'm going to try and search on Octopus. And as you can see, it came up right away. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to close out of boards.h. But there's one last thing I want to show you in here before I do that. And that's this little thing right here where it says STM32F4. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. And I'll show you why in a few moments. So I'm going to go to configuration.h. And I'm going to search on motherboard. Once I find the motherboard, we're going to highlight the ramps section and paste ours over it. The next thing that we're going to need to do is change our very first serial port to negative one. Now this may vary according to the way they do it with their hardware, but just keep in mind that you can do it with either port at the moment. And if it does change, we can always figure that out in the future. But for now, I'm going to leave the speed of the board at a quarter million bits for the baud rate. And as you can see, there's additional serial ports down here. For now, we're going to ignore these serial ports and I'll show you in future tutorials how to handle those. So now that we've got that set up and we're all set for our actual motherboard and we've set our serial port, I'm going to go over to platformio.ini. Now this recently changed with the release of 2.0.8. We're now on 2.0.8.2. So they've made some small fixes. But what they've done is they've actually taken the INI files and they've tucked them into an, a folder over here so you can find the information. So when I was talking about the STM32F4, this is the actual chipset we're working with. So what we need to do is go in here and search on the Octopus, copy it, and then we can close out of this file because we don't need it for the moment. And we can go over to platformio.ini. Inside here, our default environment is gonna be what we just 
copied. So I'm going to paste it right there. Now additional information that people like to look up, they like to know about pins. So I'm going to show you this real quick. If you go to source pins, and then you find the chipset that we were just talking about being the STM32F, you can see inside this folder that the octopus is going to be in here. So we just have to scan through here to find it. So this might take me a second to find. And apparently I'm a little slow on finding it. So it might be in another folder. Oh, there it is. And as you can see, each one of the pins is outlined in here so that you can look up the actual pin value for things like your fans and other things like that. Now this corresponds or will correlate with the actual website over here for your pinout diagram. So you can see that there's pins all around here. These pins will correspond to what you see in the folder for your pinout folder right here. So now that I've covered that, what I want to show you do, how to do is actually compile. So I'm going to minimize this folder for a moment. I'm going to go over to platformio.ini, and as you can see, the default's all set. So we need to check our .pio build folder. Now, right now it says Mega 2560, which might cause a failure. So what we want to do is we want to go over to the garbage can down here, and we want to click Clean. That way it'll clean out anything that's in that folder so we can do a build. So this is my first time actually building this, so we might see some issues. So I'm going to click on the checkbox to build. Now, if you get a failure while it's building, remember that sometimes things build out of order. So you may have to hit the checkbox a second time to build because that element has not been created with the compile as of yet. If you see a failure on the third time that you hit the actual build checkbox, then that means go to the first error that you encounter and fix that and then recompile. Now, one thing about example files that I need to point out, there's a reason why they're called example files. That means that if you're using it, it's an example of what you're doing. It may be out of date. So in order to get a better understanding of these tutorials, you have to watch the series in order to understand what I'm talking about. So now that we have that built, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the .pio folder. I'm going to go to the octopus and then I'm going to find the firmware.bin. This is the binary file that's been created to load your firmware. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say reveal in file explorer. Inside file explorer, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to go over to my E drive and I need to actually format this drive because I was using it for something else. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to format and then I'm going to say that it's FAT32 and I'm just going to click start to do a quick format. Now that that's complete, what I can then do is go back over to where I actually had the build. So let me reopen this real quick for you. So reveal in File Explorer, and you can see that it's formatted. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna send it to our E drive. Now, once it's on the E drive, we're gonna click over here and verify it's there. And then we're gonna go back over to the desktop and we're going to actually load the firmware. So on the desktop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the actual drive. I'm going to pop out the SD card. I'm going to then place it inside of here. And I'm going to power it with the USB cable they provided. So you may see a flashing for a moment while it's loading. And once that's complete, we can actually see if it's working. So one of the checks that I like to do in order to fix this 
or test it is to go over and open up Pronterface. And inside Pronterface, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to examine if it comes up okay. So to do that, I'll bring up Pronterface over here. Inside Pronterface, it does say Comport 16 already because I just opened it. But to verify that, what we can do is this. You can go over to your desktop and you can type device manager. And once this comes up, what you can check for is you go to your ports. And normally I'm on a desktop right now, so COM port one appears. But the thing that recently appeared was the USB serial device. So as you can see, it's COM port 16. So we're all set there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect to the board now and see what happens. So we're connected. It says printer is now online. So if we can run a test, even though there's no end stops connected, there's a couple of G codes we can look at to see if things are working. Now, when they're disconnected, it'll say triggered in some cases with the end stop. There are cases where it will say triggered by default, but I'm going to do M119 and press enter. And as you can see, they all say triggered because there's no end stops present. And the other thing we can do is M503 and press enter. And this will tell us about our configuration that we just loaded. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.